Good morning and welcome to St. John's Online Worship. My name is Pastor Jake Alstead and this is a place where grace abounds. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. Also, Happy Mother's Day. The Easter season is almost at a close, if you can believe that. We've been doing online worship for quite some time now. We've been on this stay-at-home thing for quite some time. And I don't know about you, but at least for me in my off time, what I've been doing is watching some Star Wars movies. Any other Star Wars fans out there? Okay, what I've been doing is I've been introducing Roman to a little bit more of Star Wars, like the original trilogy. We started watching A New Hope together a little bit. Oh, there he is right now. Come on over. Come on over. This little guy and I have been watching some Star Wars movies. We started watching A New Hope, didn't we? Yep. That's right. There's this famous scene in the, A New Hope, this first Star Wars movie, mm -hmm. um, where Princess Leia sends a message through R2-D2, and it gets picked up <laughs> by Luke Skywalker. And the famous words that, that you hear in the movie are, um, Obi -Wan Ken or help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you are my only hope. Yeah, I read the book. My big book on it. That's right. That's right. Roman has been, Roman has a lot of Star Wars books too. Yeah. <laughs> that that line reminds me of our gospel text for today from John chapter 14. Jesus says those famous words, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Right? No one comes to the Father except through me. This is what we said on Wednesday night Psalter this week that Jesus is our only hope. There is no salvation outside yeah, that of him. That reminds you of a new <laughs> Romy's a big Star Wars fan. Yeah, I am really on Star Wars this week. Absolutely. Yeah. Jesus is our only hope, and that is a good, good reminder for us today. As we said, again, on Wednesday night, Psalter, we put our hope and trust in all kinds of things, all kinds of people, um, but ultimately all those things will disappoint us. They will not last we have a tendency to take good things and make them into ultimate things. But Jesus is our only hope. Even while we were idolaters, even while we were still sinners. Yeah, I think you forgot. Do we need to do that ending? We will do that. We'll do that together. But even while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's the good news for us this yeah, morning. I was moving your head when your head was going out of my mouth. You were moving it too? Amen. Well, with that, we begin with our opening hymn. Church of God, elect and glorious, holy nation, chosen race, called as God's own special people, royal priests and heirs of grace. Know the purpose of your calling, show to all his mighty deeds. Tell of love that knows no limits, grace that meets all Shine around you that God's name is glorified. 
strangers to God's heart of love, but he brought you home in mercy, citizens of heaven above. Let his love flow out to others, let them feel a father's care. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The three sad days have quickly sped. He rises glorious from the dead. All glory to our risen head. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Even as we glory in the gift of eternal life, in that hope we spend our days in joyful repentance and faith. Let us confess our sin the sin that still so easily besets us, and receive the full forgiveness our Lord daily provides for us. Lord God, though the strife is over, the battle done, and now is the victor's triumph won, sin still hangs on. We are your baptized people. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us into our Easter joy. Upon this, your confession I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from Acts chapters 6 and 7, assorted verses. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, A complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews, because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. 
which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reciting the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. The epistle is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, 
Have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in his Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. in Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, this week I finally got to watch Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, because it hit Disney Plus on Star Wars Day. Star Wars Day, if you don't know, is May 4th, because may the 4th be with you. <laughs> may, get it? May the 4th, may the force. There's no one around to boo me. It's just not the same. 
Well, opinions about the storyline aside, and I certainly won't give away any spoilers if you haven't seen it yet, but I'll say I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed it for the same reason that I think we generally enjoy movies of that sort. We like watching hero figures go against all the odds, go against challenges, and do the great things that they were destined to do. Our enjoyment from movies like that and watching heroes fulfilling their destiny, I think speaks to something inside of us. You know, we want to think that we, too, are destined for great things, to have a larger-than-life purpose, uh, callings of grandeur. The lightsaber, so to speak, has been put in our hands. Peter, in our epistle reading today, speaks about destiny, specifically the destiny of those who do not believe Jesus. They don't believe in him. They don't trust him. To them, Jesus is not the cornerstone on which they stand. He is a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Peter writes, they stumble because they disobey the word, which is another way of saying they don't believe they don't trust in Jesus. That's another way of talking about faith. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. Now, how's that for a destiny? Doesn't sound very grand, does it? Unbelievers were always going to reject Jesus. And we may read that passage and use it to fuel our own thoughts about our own destiny, as in, well, they, right? We make a separation. Those people out there, over there, the unbelievers, are destined to reject. But, but not me. I'm different from them. I, there's something special about me. But Peter isn't going to let us put the the lightsaber in our hands. Look at what he writes in verse 10. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So the Bible's very clear about our destiny. You and I were born dead in trespasses and sins, just like everyone else. There's no distinction. All have fallen short of the glory of God. All have turned aside. All have gone astray. We were born with a one-way ticket to destruction. We were, as the famous ACDC song puts it, on a highway to hell. That was our destiny. We were destined to disobey the word along with everyone else. You see, once you were not a people, but now you are. God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. All right, Peter's making a distinction. This is who you were, but now this is who you are. You had not received mercy, now you have received mercy. And God's mercy is this, verse 9. He has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For what purpose? So that you may proclaim his excellencies. Right? Here's the thing. We don't go around proclaiming the excellencies of our destiny. Right? We don't proclaim the excellencies of our destiny. We proclaim the excellencies of the God who has graciously and mercifully changed our destiny. What is so excellent is that God has rewritten your destiny. We are not the hero of the story. We're not the one with the lightsaber. We're not the hero. Jesus is the hero of the story. You were headed down a, a path of destruction and darkness. You might even say you were headed to the dark side. But he has come near God has come near in the person and work of Jesus and brought you into his light and life. You are now a people for his own possession. Now, when Peter writes that, he is drawing on one of my favorite words in the Old Testament. 
You may have heard me talk about this before. Segula. I absolutely love this word. God uses this word to speak about his people Israel. They were his segula, which means his treasured possession. His treasured possession. And this is the truth of a segula. A segula is not loved because it's valuable. It's valuable because it's loved. I'll say that again. A segula is not loved because it's valuable. It's valuable because it's loved. Similarly, uh, Martin Luther's last thesis in his Heidelberg Disputation of 1518. I know you're probably like, what is he talking about? Hear this. It reads, The love of God does not find but creates what is pleasing to it. The love of man comes into being through what is pleasing to it. I'll say that again. The love of God does not find but creates what is pleasing to it. The love of man comes into being through what is pleasing to it. This is, in essence, what we're talking about in 1 Peter. We were born dead in trespasses and sins, just like everyone else. God didn't choose us because there's something naturally lovable about us so that there's something more special or or better about us than anyone else. He loves us because he has chosen to love us. God didn't scan the whole of humanity looking for someone desirable to love. Right? All you would have are, are sinners, those who are destined for destruction because they have all rejected God in their sin. We have all rejected God in our sin. And so he does not find someone pleasing to him out of love for us. He creates in us. He creates that which is pleasing. He forgives our sins. He makes us new. He takes this heart of stone and replaces it with a heart of flesh. He puts our sin to death with Christ. He raises us up with Christ to a new life of love and faith. A new life that is covered with Jesus, his righteousness. This is much different than the way that the world loves, right? We look for something or someone that is pleasing to us. And then our love is created for that thing or person because it's pleasing to us. But God's love is different. He loves first, and he loves sinners. He loves unlovable people. And he creates in us that which is pleasing to him. Why does all of that matter? One, it humbles us and it gives us the right perspective We don't get to put ourselves as the hero of the story, the one who has the lightsaber, conquers all the trials, you know, wins the day. We're not the hero of the story. We don't get to claim that we're better than anyone else. And two, this is very important, two, it means that God's love for us doesn't depend on us. He doesn't love us more when we're good, and he doesn't love us less when we're bad. There is not a person that has ever lived that God doesn't love. In fact, hell is completely populated by people God loves. God's love for you does not depend on you. You don't have to do anything to make sure that God will continue to love you. He just does. Tully into Vigian calls God's love for us gloriously flat. And I've always loved that phrase. The love that we have for each other is like a roller coaster, right? It goes up and it goes down depending on what we find pleasing or, or lovable, right? Our love will fluctuate. But God's love is, as he says, gloriously flat. That means if, if we mess up or outright rebel, God doesn't love us any less. And if we do good, if we're having a good day, uh, we serve others, we resist temptation, God doesn't love us anymore those days. His love is already fixed to the max. 
Right? There's no greater love than God becoming human flesh and blood to give his life for sinners. Nothing is going to change that. It's gloriously flat. God saw the people that he created. He saw them turn from him, go astray to dwell in darkness and destruction in death. He saw us. And he had a deep, gut-wrenching compassion for us. So he stepped in and he refused to let us lie in the bed that we made for ourselves. He called us out of darkness. Out of the darkness of sin and death and destruction brought us into his marvelous light. The marvelous light of forgiveness, of grace, of mercy, of eternal life. Friends, this good news is for everyone. God so loved the world. If you're hearing me right now, hear this. This good news is for you. Jesus came for you. Your sins are forgiven. God has had mercy on you. Jesus died and rose for you. Your destiny has been rewritten. (laughs) And that... That's pretty excellent. Believe it, friends. Thanks be to God in Jesus' name. Amen. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, with the whole creation, we praise you for your gift of life and the world that sustains us and all the living. Grant that seeing your even greater gift of deliverance from the disfigurement of sin and the promise of the renewal of your original design, all people may come to repentance and faith in your gracious invitation Through Jesus Christ, risen and victorious over death, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give power to your word as it is proclaimed boldly by your church, filled with the Holy Spirit and the faithful witness of all, as it is preached and taught by all who are ordained and commissioned by you, as well as those to whom you have given the gifts to be faithful witnesses of your salvation and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn the hearts of all who bear the authority of government in our land and around the world, that they serve and lead all people in the ways of justice, peace, and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all who suffer sickness or injury, give the comfort of your healing. And to all who suffer any persecution for standing for the truth of the Christian faith, give strength to endure. To all, increase faith and faithfulness believing that the risen Christ leads us to the glory of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning we lift up to you especially John, Clarissa, Jane, Linda, Nancy, Allison, Margaret, Mark, Tony, Helma, Mateo, April, Stuart, Alicia, Jonathan, Maria, the friends and family of Frank Daly, and the friends and family of Lenny Altura, and all those that we name in our hearts. Risen Lord, grant healing and comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the faithful who have gone before us, 
for the prophets and apostles, for saints and martyrs, especially for your servant Stephen. We give you thanks and ask that you strengthen us to walk according to their example throughout all our days to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, please know that you have peace with God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Because of what Jesus has done for us, his life, his death, his resurrection, we truly are at peace with God and we share that peace with one another. I can't wait to share that peace once again with you all in person. At this time also, we would normally take our offering. As I've said, um, for the, all of these Sundays that we've been in, in quarantine, no doubt this is a difficult time. And so only if possible, I ask that you continue to give your tithes and offerings to St. John's, uh, that we can continue our word and sacrament ministry here. The easiest way to do that right now is to continue to send in checks or envelopes to the building. Our address here is St. John's Lutheran Church, 47 Winthrop Street, Williston Park, New York, 11596. And again, as always, please know this goes both ways. If there's something that you need, please let us know. Contact the office and we will find a way to help. Thank you. And with that, dear friends, we place our hands out in front of us like a cup as we receive the blessing of our Lord. Oh, I love that. Let this be a reminder to us today that we're not the hero of the story, right? We are the recipients of God's amazing grace in and through his son, Jesus Christ. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Roman. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yeah.